Hi, this is Gordon Young with Maximum PC Magazine. The video you're about to watch was obviously shot before Intel announced its uh, not recall, but let's say uh, replacement of all 8 million Sandy Bridge chipsets. So please remember, any of the boards that you see here, when you buy them, if you can buy them, should have the, in, the uh, corrected chipset with the B3 spin. Hi, this is Gordon Young with Maximum PC Magazine. Intel Sandy Bridge is hot. It's the only thing people are talking about these days. I'm here to walk you through five motherboards that we're going to be looking at. Three of these I've actually benchmarked and reviewed. Two of these I'm kind of going to give you a quick preview. I have them broken up here in basically a price span. These boards are sort of, you know, entry level boards, about 180 bucks. In this range, 250. Right here, 320. And the main difference you're probably wondering, because they all take the same CPUs, is features. Down here on the bottom, they're kind of stripo. This is Intel's. Uh, DP67BG board, which I'm going to pick up. It's pretty bare bones. Uh, you only get six SATA ports, but you do get the cool little uh, LED uh, skull. But pretty much, it's a strip. It's a stripped down board for 180 bucks. You move up a little bit, you get MSI's P67A uh, GD65. What this does give you is additional um, SATA ports. It has four SATA six ports. Uh, four SATA 3 ports and it also is, gives you two uh, USB controllers so it has a total of four uh, USB ports. Uh, two on the back and then two using a header that actually they, they give you a little dongle that runs out the back. You go up one more step you get uh, ASUS's uh, P8, P67 Deluxe. This is the board actually I've been using the longest. I really love it. We, we've already done a walkthrough of the U EFI uh, on this board. It's, it's pretty tricked out uh, what you do get is Bluetooth capability. You can reboot, reset, monitor your board and overclock using your Android, iPhone, or Blackberry. And you also, of course, get uh, four SATA 6, four SATA 3, and also, uh, like the MSI board, four USB. Two USB 3 on the rear, and then two running on a header. It's a beautiful board, really well balanced. You only can run two cards in SLI, and that's the maximum. Uh, behind that is uh, Fatality's new uh, Professional 1 Series board. The board's actually made by ASRock, but there's no ASRock uh, uh, branding on it anywhere. It's got a beautiful you know, red and black color screen scheme. It's also set up to take three cards, but interestingly, you can run this in uh, SLI only, so two NVIDIA cards, or you can run it with three um, ATI cards in, in three-way crossfire. That's because this board doesn't have the Enforce 200 chip, which this board does. We'll get to that later. The other thing, I haven't actually benchmarked this board yet, but I'm really looking forward to it because this is the first, first board I've seen with the e-tron USB 3 controller. All the boards here use the NEC controller that everybody's been running in their motherboards for probably eight, about six to eight months now. The e-tron controller uh, promises to be cheaper, and they're also saying that the performance of it is better than the NEC part. We'll see once we get it fired up, but this is just a quick preview of it right now. It does give you two, actually I think it gives you three of the e-tron chips. So it has uh, four USB 3 ports in back, plus two in front. Now when you want to talk about USB 3, when you want to talk about USB 3, Gigabytes, got it. This is uh, Gigabytes uh, P67A UD7 board. Gigabyte of course loves to push USB 3, this board goes over the top. Uh, what you are getting are, you get basically 10 USB 3 ports. You get 6 on the rear, plus 2 uh, USB 3 headers. Um, Gigabyte does, that, does this by actually using two VIA hub controllers. There's actually two USB hubs embedded on this board. That splits off the two NEC controllers to give you your 10 ports. But the other thing that's really interesting about the Gigabyte board is this is the first board I've seen for Sandy Bridge that integrates an Enforce 200 board. And as you know, uh, P67's chipset is a little limited. You really can't run that many PCI Express lanes because that's all Intel gives you in the CPU. And for 200, lets you split up all the PCI Express lanes and sort of does all the load balancing so you can run multiple cards. This board is rated to run three uh, SLI cards. I've done that. I've actually run three uh, GTX 580s, or you can run only two ATI cards in Crossfire X. As far as performance, uh, on these three boards, if you're looking at 180 versus 250 versus 320, uh, pretty much in CPUs and gaming, it's pretty much balanced. I'm not seeing any difference because, you know, it's the same chipset, the same CPU, 
most of the functionality is in the CPU these days. Don't expect a lot of performance differences. What I am surprised to see though is I.O. performance differences. The Gigabyte UD7, the USB 3 performance is far greater than the other NEC, uh, NEC parts that I've seen here. I think it might be because of that VIA chipset. I'm seeing about 180 meg reads uh, on USB 3 versus about 156, 155 that I'm getting from the MSI and the ASUS board. Uh, also the uh, I.O. is a little better on SATA 6. Uh, we'll be looking at sort of more USB 3 performance issues as now since we finally got a new USB control on this e-tron board. But anyway, that's, that's kind of, it's, I just wanted to give you a, an idea of what you get because a lot of people go, well, what am I getting for, you know, $300 or 180 versus $250? Uh, obviously, ASUS, MSI, they have different boards at different ranges, but this kind of gives you an idea of the, all the extra features. They just start adding features. Uh, like the ASUS board, they actually give you front-mounted USB 3 port and, all, of course, all the Bluetooth stuff, and this gives you the Enforce 200 chip and the uh, USB hubs uh, in it. So, part. On the MSI board, I think it's a great board for the money. For 180 bucks, you, you're getting a lot. You're getting, you know, uh, four, uh, four out of six, you know, a lot of USB 3. It's not totally stripped for 180 bucks. And frankly, uh, it's nice to be able to have the option to run three 580s, but if you're on a budget, are you really going to be running three 580 cards? So um, I think that's a great board for the price. And, you know, come back to the MaximumPC.com and I'll have full reviews of the uh, Fatality board as well as the Intel board. I'm looking forward to seeing how the e-tron chip does as well as the Fatality board does with, I'm going to try to run it with, Try a slide. It's not rated for it, but I'm going to see if I can make it. Anyway, this is Gordon with Maximum PC. We'll talk to you later.